I hope you've wanted to be in an anime because Zone of the End is the second runner is a game that is basically an anime. You are literally playing an anime. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but with how animes play out, it can either be enjoyable or boring as hell. Thankfully, the second runner is on the fun side of things because it captures the good parts of a mech anime, cool mech designs, one versus the world type of combat, and best of all, a sword. You gotta be weeb, otherwise what's the point, right? The winner of the year was Hesperia Gales. No idle talk, you'll crash, Dingo! We start off the story with our main character, Dingo. Dumb name, but whatever. He's introduced doing the most boring thing of all, working. That's what he's doing for the first five minutes of the game, just doing his job and discussing trivia. This is a nice change for how most anime or animu games give you their story. It's not too long after that intro where he finds the Orbital Frame Jehuti. Orbital Frames basically being this game's version of Gundams. Yes, I'm pulling out the Gundam card because this plays like most of them already. Earth Faction vs Mars Colony, only this time they're called Space Force and Barum. Dingo has a history with Barum and this is something I like. The main character who you're meant to relate to doesn't care a single bit about the war between Space Force and Barum. Instead, he just wants to kill Noman, the leader of Barum, for reasons that are explained later in the game, but from face value for the player, it's because he tried killing Dingo first. So you end up getting the save the world slash revenge story going on. Key story moments are presented with actual animations like you get from Evangelion and Gundam, but it's best you play with Japanese voices, as the animations are not synced for English voiceovers. It's not a perfect story, because there is a character called Leo, who I can't relate to. The way he acts towards Jehuti is illogical to high heaven. Literally doesn't make any sense. Go with. Shoot down the enemy's attack with lasers. This is where the game shines. The second runner plays as a fast-paced mech action game. I can't think of anything better other than anime, and I prefer to use something else to describe it. Not everyone watches anime, but might be interested in mechs. I mean, look at Pacific Rim. Not many people actually watched an anime like Evangelion, and people still love Pacific Rim. You start off with the regular long range shots that have four different modes. Holding down the attack button at a distance allows you to shoot slow but high damage energy shots. Pressing it in rapid succession turns it into a faster, less impactful shot. Bursting through the air changes it into a homing spread that can hit an insane number of enemies. And if you hold your burst without moving, you can make an energy orb, quite similar to Goku's spirit bomb. Using the attack button in melee range will bring out your energy sword, which is where most of the combat is. Sadly, there's not much variety, it's just a 4 button combo you can end with up, down, or front knockback effect. The knockback is important as it gives you distance for when you might need it, or push an enemy into a wall dealing more damage. The melee combat is a bit lacking, at least on its own. You can grab other objects to make melee combat more interesting with a panel that can double as a shield, or a pole that has a wide arc, or even grab the enemy and throw them back at their bodies to hopefully destroy both in one go. Thankfully, variety comes in the form of sub-weapons, which are exactly as they sound. There's a few to collect and by the end of the game you'd have used all of them and decided on which suit your style. I mainly use Gauntlet and Geyser as it fits my playstyle with stunning and pushing enemies into walls. Zero shift though. When you get that sub-weapon, man, that's when you fully unlocked your maximum level of weebness. It's basically a really quick dash to enemies with a short charge time. I guess the Vector Cannon is the first sub-weapon that makes you feel like this, but that's completely different and personally I barely used it. The boss fights are unique, really unique. The first boss you fight is obviously the easiest, but a good introduction to the standard weapons Jehuti has to begin with. And like games such as Devil May Cry, when you beat the boss, you unlock a new sub-weapon that will be useful for later fights, but can still be accomplished without the use of them. Apart from fights against Anubis, you're forced into using Zero Shift. At least it looks cool. As a whole, the bosses are challenging and test your knowledge on the mechanics every time. One boss requires you to push her into a wall each time in order to get hits on her or have her dash into the wall. Another needs you to pay attention to audio cues as you'll be completely in the dark. So they're unique, which I like. I don't like it when something has a different model but the same moveset as something else. That's lazy. There's also a collectible you can obtain called X Missions. These are basically mission repeats but with a score system where you are timed and given a rank at the end of them. So if you want to see how good you are at the game, this is the way to find out, seeing as the main story doesn't give you any ranking whatsoever. There's only one thing that gives you a rank, and it's one of those things that basically say save people and make sure buildings don't get destroyed, which is extremely hard to do. And when you get a good rank at it, you're like, yeah, I'm pretty good at the game, but there's nothing else that tells you, hey, you're doing well. You have a versus mode, which allows you to go head to head against any boss you've unlocked as well as play as any of the bosses. So if you wanted to play as Anubis, this is the mode for you. You can do a 1v1 against the computer or a friend locally. I played on this mode for a little bit as I wanted to try out Anubis. The drawback is you have to use the classic controls, which aren't optimal as I played the whole game on the pro control settings because they made sense. A really important note is that the game is best played with the controller as mouse and keyboard are awful and it doesn't show you which keys are what. I don't understand this. If Strikes at Zero, a game made by a small studio can make a PC port that works really well with full mouse and keyboard support, why can't Konami who have more money? I didn't play the second runner in VR as I don't have a VR headset, so all I'm going to say is it has a VR mode. 
There's only one issue I've had with the game and that's the fact I need a controller. I've always said that if a game comes to PC, it should have full mouse and keyboard support at least for the gameplay. The options menu using just the keyboard, it's not the end of the world, but developers need to realize not everyone has a controller and older controllers now aren't being registered by newer games. Or vice versa as PC allows us to play games that are older and came out before say the PS3 and Xbox 360 era so if you have a 360 controller and try to use it on an older game before that point it won't register. Aside from that I didn't really have any noteworthy issues the final boss fight was a bit of a disappointment for me but I realized there was some form of strategy to be used against him just it's nothing special. Don't get angry dingo this is just a form of entertainment. Devil. I'd recommend this to anyone who wants to try out a mech game or to anyone who wants to play it for the story. It is heavily anime focused in its plot so keep that in mind if you're not into anime. The gameplay alone was enough to sell me on it with the fact I can use a fast mech as well as have a mode that ranks me. I'm a huge fan of games that tell you if you're doing well. If you're still unsure there's a demo you can download for both the PS4 and PC. If you enjoyed my video and would like to see more reviews in the future, like, comment and subscribe. You can also follow me on social media, links are in the description down below.